All right, so I'm just going to start. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Attack of the Blurred. My name is Diom, and I am joined by uh, a special guest. She was my neighbor at the um, science Atlanta Science Expo, Enough the Cab. Uh, I got her comic book and started reading it, but I'll let her introduce herself. Go Hi, ahead. I'm Massage Dan. <laughs> So, wait, wait, you yeah, want, you, you gotta, do you want government name or you want a screen name? Oh, Stop give, the screen give, name. Give the government, give the, the screen name because, you know, people don't really care about the government name. Yeah, they don't. So, like, if you look up my real name online, it'll, right. you'll, it'll be nothing. You got to promote your joy. So, you know, give give the rapper a shout out. You know right. how rappers are like, yeah, I got my album dropping. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my name, my online name is Massage Den. It's spelled M-U-S-A-S-H-D-E-N. Specifically that way. If you run into a massage down online, it's more than likely me. Right. Because, like, uh, that's an old, old, long story about uh, the internet when it was new. And I had a website yes. on Homestead. <laughs> back when Homestead used to do websites. Right, I used right. to be Masashi okay. then. But okay. Homestead took out the I and the space for some reason. Yeah. But Massage Den is always available. Okay. So I'm just like, cool. That's the one. It's like, but yeah, That's it is. Favorite. It is after the legendary set. Gotcha. Right? And, and you are the the uh, um. You are a, a writer, comic book artist. You are extraordinary. Indeed. Yes, I am the creator, writer, and artist behind the the moderately popular <laughs> the moderately popular comic okay, called okay. Illegal Tender. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. So, so um, before we get into that, let's let's talk about your your nerd journey, if you will. Like, when nerd did you? Journey. Yeah, when did <laughs> you? When did you really know that? Oh, this is for me. Like, you know, was oh. it video games? Was it comics? What got you into the it world? It was. I'm gonna blame it on Bruce Tim in the 1992 uh-huh. Batman the Animated Series. Yo, because that that was like the golden age of yes, American animated series. You had Gargoyles. You had yeah. Batman. You had. Yeah. Superman. Yeah. But um yeah, yeah that's Superman when they too popping. Yeah, that's when they started making like somewhat serious cartoons. Right, right. Cuz like you think about the plot of Gargoyles nowadays, that crap is heavy. <laughs> yeah, Gargoyles, you know what? I always felt sort of weird about Gargoyles. Like I wanted it to be so much more than it was. Yeah, I felt I like Gargoyles could have been very great if it was told in like a Game of Thrones type of way where people actually died. Yeah. But it was a Disney property and they weren't going to do that. Cause, yeah, because yeah. Macbeth could just go jump in a lake. But that I guess that's his, <laughs> I guess that's his curse is that this fool can't die because right. he's so locked with Demona. Her yeah. ass won't die either. Yeah. So it's Demona, like... Demona, <laughs> I, I, I got to say, I, I used to think Demona was very attractive. As, as a young kid, Everyone, I saw Demona oh, and I was man, like... Oh, man. I used to draw... Gargoyles all the time, and Demona mm-hmm. was my favorite one to draw because she was like the only girl for the yeah, longest that was, time. Yeah, she was. She was. But for then the they brought her out Angela, and she was like a good version of Demona. And mm-hmm. I was just like, eh, all right, I'll buy that for five cents. <laughs> but nah, but yeah, that, so. that's that's when it all began around 1992. I was mm-hmm. I don't want to say my age. I'm not gonna say you how old I, 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 I was. Not gonna say how old I was back then. But I but, remember but those shows, and they were, like the, they were like the they were like the they were like the like the like. It was, uh, well, that was like, uh, that was after the first Batman movie, but I think right before the... first before one with, the, uh, with, um... Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton and, and yeah. Tim Burton yeah. directing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the second one came around, and I was like, all right, this, this guy Batman mm-hmm. might, got, like, might be worth looking into. And of right. course, there was, like, no internet back then, so you, you just had to... Animated, or you had to go buy the book. Yeah, basically. <laughs> the basically, those, those you are had. your two options, dude. Yeah. Like, take it or leave it. Yeah. So... So, yeah, that's when it all started. And then, like, there were a bunch of other cartoons. Like, remember when cartoons used to come on on Saturday? Okay, and you yeah. Sit, and there used to be three channels that showed them. It used to be Fox, mm-hmm. WB, and to a lesser extent, like, ABC Family, I want to say. Which was the third one? What cartoons were on ABC Family? I don't remember. They used to have stuff like Detention and uh, Fillmore. That's oh, where those started. Okay. That was ABC Family used to be Channel Thirty Nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. on Channel Three, they had Recess. Saturdays, yes, they had Recess. Recess they had Fillmore. They had Detention. They had um. Okay. Wait, was it called Detention? I can't remember. And they also had Pepperette. I used to love Pepperette. Pepper I remember that. She's too cool for seventh grade. Like, and that, and then, <laughs> and then that came that came out when I was like thirteen. So yeah. I was like, "Yo, this cartoon about a thirteen year old girl?" Because there's never, <laughs> yeah, like especially nowadays, like Cartoon Network is such a sausage party. Like, yeah, you got Craig of the Creek coming out. You got Steven Universe. You, you got you got even Adventure though, Time. You even got though Steven Universe, show. like. 
Ninety percent. I think the most of the characters in Steven Universe are women. There's yeah, but, only like a few guys, but, it, the but majority it's still are called women. Steven Universe. The show ain't about Pearl or the other one. It's, it's <laughs> about Steven. <laughs> it, like Pearl's the only one I can remember off the top of my head. Pearl, that, that show. Uh, Amethyst, and and um, and uh, 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 Garnett. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, it's still called Steven Universe. It ain't about them. It's yeah. about him. Yeah, it's about the little Steven. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah it's still a boy as the main character. So like yeah, any show with a, any show with a girl. Or even a girl of color is a main character. That's why I love Gargoyle so much. Because Lisa mm. Maza, she was like she was like black and Native American, mm, and yeah, she yeah. she wasn't yeah. like a freaking secretary. She was a cop. Yeah, like she was like this le- red leather jacket wearing yeah. like cop. She was a badass. Like they assigned they assigned that white white boy to her. She's like I don't need this fool. I don't need you. <laughs> Freaking Goliath will wake up and have my back. I don't need you. That's, that's true because uh, <laughs> there's not that many. You're right. Out of all the cartoons I'm looking at right now, I can't think of too many. Like, the they'll, have, they'll have a girl. She'll be there, there. But she won't be the lead. But she won't be the lead. Like, right. I used to love, uh, what's this weird one from France or Canada? It's called Alpha Teens on Machines. Mm, didn't see that it's one. Called, it's, it's, it's abbreviated as Adam. Okay. But I can't remember where it originated from. Uh-huh. But... It was like a group of guys, plus Catalina. <laughs> <laughs> like she was just there. She was like the token girl. And yeah. Like she was of color, but like she was she was the only girl on the team. And I'm like, yeah. what is up with that? Yeah, and yeah. too many too many shows follow that recipe. That same like, recipe, yeah. Like Power Rangers. Okay, there's five of them and two of them are girls. There's okay, two girls, yeah. I'll buy that. Okay, but a lot of them are just like it um, centers around this, the male lead. It's the, it's the male lead plus you know. This chick that might like him and might not. Yeah. So, yeah. Any any show that had like a female protagonist uh-huh. of color, <laughs> it, it, she didn't have to be of color. But I'd be like, yo, female protagonist calling the shots. That's why I used yeah. to love Pepper Ann so much. Mm-hmm. Like she's like this weird redhead. Yeah. So, and she's not like everybody else. So that's why I really clung to to Pepper Ann because gotcha. I was like, well, damn, dang, she's just like me. She's this like all the popular people in school are looking at her like, her. Yeah. yeah, they're looking at her like. Well, what she got going on that she ain't got to pay attention to us? And I was like, she pepper in. Right. She she ain't got to be with you. <laughs> like, Poor Zagan. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, even even uh, when I think about the shows, um, I, I know a lot of people keep making all the jokes about uh, the Superwoman show. It's a Supergirl show. Sorry. Supergirl? On, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on CW. And they oh, keep the new making, one? Yeah, they make, keep making jokes like, because um, you remember Saturday Night Live did uh, a joke on... on um, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Black Widow. Mm. They did a joke when she was hosting. And the joke was that um, Marvel put out all these awesome movies, but where's, you know, Black Widow's movie? Yeah. And it did like a small little preview, a preview of her movie. <laughs> and her movie is like a romantic comedy <laughs> about Black yeah. Widow trying to make it into the city. Yeah. And it was just like, really? And yeah. And the funny thing is that um, that kind of mirrors what Supergirl is about. It's like all the other yeah. guys, they get to go out, they get to do some crazy shit, and her story is about, oh my gosh, who is she falling in love with? Who, who <laughs> is she falling in love with? Why can't she get a leg up in her career? Like, right. <laughs> she's Supergirl. Yeah. Like, she she yeah. got a job? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> who cares yeah. about that aspect? But I guess when you don't have the budget to make people fly, you gotta be like, who's she falling in love with? Right, but, but I mean... Like, yeah, yeah most was... stuff about girls are rom-coms. I'm just like, they nah, are. I need it to be, like, take this with a grain of salt, because mm. at, at the heart of it, my comic book is kind of a little bit of a rom-com. Okay, so let, let's, get into, let's, get into your, let's get into your comic book. So, so Yes, I've, I've read all... all uh, how many chapters are out right now? Uh, five. There's okay, five. so I read... number five. I read all five chapters. There's a big reveal at the end of of the last chapter. Ooh, what was it? You don't remember? No, I don't. I just hey, read no, wait, it. wait, number five? I just remember wait. the grand... Okay, let's let's not get there because we're jumping ahead of time. Okay. Let's go back <laughs> oh, to the very okay. beginning. I remember right. what happened at the end of five. Okay, okay so now let, I remember. Let's, let's, go back let's, to, let's go back to the beginning. To the very beginning. So, so talk to us because the comic book... Um, it's in a world where there are, there are people with superpowers. They're called supers. Mm-hmm. Um, the public is not necessarily friendly to them. No. You know, which is because they're different. Which is like, normal. It mirrors real life. Like right. you're, you're different. You you you're ostracized. There must be something wrong with you. Like, right, right, right. Because everybody's like wants that picket fence life that's been lived at least a hundred times already. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I, I just look at those people like, what is up with you? They so, don't understand. They're a little scared, right? Yeah, they're and a little then, scared because right. of something that's different. And they, of course, they can't control this thing. They, right. come, they don't come close to controlling these people with their right. powers. But. Right. And, so, yeah, the, and, the whole thing is, okay, here's a, here's what I give people the synopsis. You the, prob- spiel? You, the spiel? You, the spiel. What's you, the spiel? You, you probably on. heard it a hundred times while sitting it. next to me at the expo. <laughs> okay. I ask people if they like cars. They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, I make this one. It's about superpower bartenders living in a world where having powers is illegal. Okay. And okay. That, that that gets them right away. They're like, superpower bartenders? But, oh, they live in a world where power is illegal. Why mm. is it illegal? Mm. Well, nobody really knows that off the bat. You got to right. read to find out why it's illegal. And then you get into illegal. it. Yes. Right. So, so we get introduced to this main character. Yeah. Kittle. All right. Her, well, her nickname is Kittle. Her real name, her government name, is, Gummin. is Lily Breland. Yeah, because I, right? I know her as, as yeah, Lily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But go ahead. Her name is Lily Breland. Uh, right. Emil actually gives her the nickname Kittle in the first right. issue. He says so that, it like it's like in a small balloon, but uh-huh. he says it, and from then on, that's, that's what he calls That's another character, Emil, that we also get there introduced to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, so it it starts off with her waking up in the back of a van. So you, right. you're just as, you start out just as you lost as right, she is. Right into yes. the action, right? So she she wakes up. She's in the back of a van, and she's like, "Well, how did this happen?" I'm like, "She's like dressed to go to bed." Like, right. She's like, "Oh, how did I end up here?" So it comes to find out that mm. she's been picked up mm. by Dell. Dell is the woman who runs the bar. Well, well, with well the, yeah, first, okay. let's not reveal too much, <laughs> okay. right? Because okay. I still want people to go and read this yeah, and too. then and then find stuff <laughs> out. So let's so, not okay. reveal too much. But she wakes up. She sees that she's been taken away. Yeah, right? yeah. And, then, and she's like, "Well, what, what's going on with this?" And they're like, "Well, we'll explain later." She's like, "Nerds to that, right?" So yeah, it, it starts out like she's thrust into this world that she. She basically knew nothing. Well, she knew about it. Right. Because she knows. But only on the outskirts. She wasn't yeah, deeply she involved. She wasn't deeply involved because right. she knows that she has power. She's, right. had, she's had them ever since ever. Like, she knows that her parents are uh-huh. superpowered beings. She knows right. that her brothers have some kind of superpower. She knows yeah. that she's different. Right. And she's she hasn't been suppressing it whole life, but her dad has been like, Yo, keep this on the download, right? Right, right, right. Because there are They've people. They've been told to keep yeah, it quiet because it's known. They, they, that, they know that. They're, well, they're not blind or they're not headless. They know right. they live in a world where if you show if you're different at all, yeah, you have some kind of power. There's some Somebody, issues. Somebody's <laughs> gonna come and snatch you up. Right, right, right. right. So, There's some consequences to that. So he's so. so his he's taught her how to control them, but to an extent where he's like, keep it on the wraps. Like if they find out you're different, they're gonna come get you. Right. So she wakes up in the back of the van, and that's how that's how the whole thing starts. You, yeah. You so come I mean, to find out that. You know, who does she get taken by? Does she get taken by the bad guys? Yeah, you got all these like, you got all yeah. these questions and then you got a lot yeah. of a few reveals in the first episode. But one of the one of the things that I, I as I was reading the entire thing, I felt like this was much more of a teenage drama. A little bit because she's like what sixteen when it first starts, and then I think her birthday happens like what in the third issue she turns 17. yeah yeah around that so it's she... like it's it's a bit of a teenage drama because you know that's what sells yeah but um it's a bit of a teenage drama because like that's around that age that you're like oh my god world's changing I'm right. not a kid anymore right. but like I'm not an adult and there's still people calling the shots on my life and I don't really like that so she that's what it is it's like right. she's her regular life is torn asunder and she's right. thrust into this world that she, she never to, she, she never asked to be in this world. Right. Like, and then she, she never... has to define herself in these new conditions that have been put on her now. Yeah. And know? she's and okay. like if you read about her, she's she's not the type of person that'd be like, oh, okay, well this is my life now. She's like, nah. My life changed dramatically. <laughs> I don't like none of it. Right. She's like, I had a great life. Yeah. Right. And some jerk came and ruined it. So I want revenge. Like yeah. that, like that's like <laughs> a lot of people are expecting her to I, I have like a lot of followers online and mm-hmm. they're like when does she have her, her her moment of zen where she realizes revenge is an answer? I'm like, y'all are asking for too much. So, I don't think she ever, I don't think Kiddo will ever right. get to that point where she's like, you know what? Maybe I should direct this. Like she's like, nah. Until so, I get my revenge, nothing else matters. Right. So so that's that's the one narrative. Since I was a kid, I've always seen it in movies where it's like the hero is driven by revenge. Right, mm-hmm. and then goes, and then right when that hero is about to get that revenge, they have they like that have, cha- that conscious, right. like I'm not as bad as you, I'm better than right. This. Some some I moment. could just throw you in jail. <laughs> I don't think it'll happen. And, and so and so, I've always I always wondered who came up with that idea. Who came up with the theory that you know you going and getting revenge is actually not the answer, right? And and I get I get the whole you know uh, <laughs> eye for eye leads to a blind society, right? I get that, yeah. But 
But the movie that I saw that kind of flipped that whole thing on his head that I loved was Deadpool. At the very end of Deadpool, he's standing there and he wants to kill Francis. Yeah. And Colossus. And, and Colossus is like, you'll feel better if you don't. And he's like, no, I won't. But you Right. And he's like, maybe after this guy. Boom. And it's like, we can start tomorrow. He's you know? like, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Like, let me get my revenge and then I'll be a better person. Like, right. But, so. Yeah, because... Because throughout the comic, uh, the main protagonist is, mm-hmm. a, is a woman named Cynthia. Mm-hmm. And she is just, she has no redeeming qualities. Oh, sorry, Spo- the antagonist. Yeah. antagonist. The antagonist, the, yeah. yes. The, the, her name is Cynthia, and for lack of a better word, she's, she's the worst. Yeah. Like, be, lack of a better description, she's unremorseful. Like, she likes being, you know... I, Agent twenty seven, whatever her number is. I forget. I always forget vibe, I make her number. The vibe that I got from her was like, I think she's a little of a psychopath. Like she doesn't a really bit. like she she she's one of those superpower people that abuses her power. And right. She, she doesn't care. She's like, I could do this, and you know what? I could like her power is teleportation. Yeah. So uh, of course she's like, well, I could teleport yeah, spoiler, you to the top. Spoiler. Of, yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> she can teleport. But you find that you, in the you, first you, issue. Yeah, you find so. that out in the first issue anyway. So uh-huh. like, so what is it like? Ten pages in, you find out that she can teleport. But right. she's one of those people that are like. If you look at me wrong, I'm gonna teleport you to the top of a building and drop and you drop off you. and skip and walk away skipping. Like yeah. she she has it come to find out that she's part of this uh deeper like it gets into it around issue yeah, six. I start she, getting she, deeper into what is really going on right. with Cynthia and why she like thinks this way. No, uh, honestly, um one of the highlights about the comic book is the dialogue that you write. I <laughs> I I laughed a few times out oh, loud good. at some of the jokes you say, some of the words you use. Like one of the best <laughs> you you had a pickup line. I think it's like an like issue three when the brothers are at the mall and one of them says to a girl, he's like, Hey girl, you 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 look cuter than a, than a kitten with a cupcake on his head. <laughs> you want my number? And I was like, this is a great line. I wish I, I knew this when I was young and in high school. I would have had so much more success. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That You're talking about Hunter. Hunter you is are, a little bit of a Lothario. Yo, yeah. you are yeah. cuter than a kitten with a cupcake on his head. And like, that, how you say no to that? Like, <laughs> that disarms any girl. Immediately, she's laughing. Immediately, yeah. she's like, yeah. what? And then you're like, you want my number? And it's just like, perhaps. Yes. Yeah, you exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I love it. I love it. I, like, it's brilliant. Because I think about it from my end. Like, I'm not a teenage boy. <laughs> right. Like, I don't know what they be saying. No, but, but this is much but better. It, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it is better because mm. I'm just like, it's off-putting when they're like, what's your number? I'm like, I don't want to give it to you. But right. like, if a dude was like, you want my number? I'd be like. Yeah, let me hear. Yeah. Like, I might call you. Like, I, that was, I, that's a nice way to I ask. want a menu. I want a yeah. menu of numbers I can yes. pick from whenever yes. I want to. I see. Yeah. yeah if I'm telling you, yeah, uh, when you have time, is amazing. <laughs> when you have time on the side, you should make a small little pickup book. <laughs> pick up line from H- a girl. Hunter's pick up line. Right. Hunter pick up line from, from a lady <laughs> to men. This is from what a, you want to say. It's like, yeah, this is how you don't. Because, like, I like think it'll he, work. He's, he, he loves women like he, he does. really does he's only 15 but he loves women and like he's i don't want to say he's a mama's boy but he's the he's the younger twin okay so he's the baby of the family so okay. he's got like that now that who's, sweetness who's younger younger is, is the one that comes out first when no. they're, they're when they're being delivered no twins when they're delivered the first uh-huh. the first one that comes out is oldest the, oh. like the last one last one out is the youngest oh, okay, so he okay, was okay. he was the last one right, my bad I was messing up yeah. yeah the last one to come out is the youngest because the older is like yeah. oldest by a couple yeah, seconds Ar- or a couple minutes Errol's Got the it. middle child right so right 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 okay the other twin Errol yes who has his own like who, Wait, did you really? see his smoothness in issue five? Yes, like yeah. he, he got into himself. He got a nice little haircut now. Like, yeah, he, I was like, he's standing up the bullies and stuff. I love how he came into his own. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I was and like, that, that's because his twin was there for him. Yeah. What was that issue four where yeah. they have that heart to heart in the yeah, shop? Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, yeah. like, "Well, don't feel bad, Errol. Like you've been taught." And, and don't, that don't you reveal. I don't want to reveal what issue he's going through. I want yeah. people to read it so yeah. they can get to that. But, but no, but yeah. just, just know that his twin was there for him uh-huh. and that's what gave him the confidence to be like, yo. I'm, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be me. Like, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. Like, whether it be like, you know, a giant agency that's trying mm-hmm. to clip my wings or some jerk at school, he's mm-hmm. going to be it. Right, right, right. Like, he's like, 
he's like, I'm black, I'm here, like, I don't care no more. Right. Like, he's, he's stopped worried about it. Because right, right. he knows that his brother will always have his back. Yeah, that, I mean... <laughs> we, I was, I was the last issue. I was, well, anyway, let's talk bigger picture because okay. if we get too deep into it, <laughs> then people will be like, "Wait, what are they talking about?" So I want to, I want to stick bigger picture. Bigger picture. Um, there's, there's a, uh, it's, it's also a family drama. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, it's also a, a, a good family drama. Oh, yeah. But, but, um, oh yeah, I, Kittle learns that like her family, like she. She kind of been living with rose colored glasses as far as her father yes. was. Like she didn't know that he, yes, that's was some, part of it. Yeah, that's some reveal. Part of it all. Like she didn't know that he was part of it all, but uh-huh. come to find out that it's not as bad as it sounds. Like nothing is ever like she loved her dad and all, right? But she but didn't he know that he he like she knew he went to work, right? She just didn't know what he did. What at work. he did. Now I, I want to <laughs> let's talk about before we even let me, let's uh, rewind all the way to. Before you even wrote this comic book, okay. right? Like, where did the inspiration come from? What what got you? What point were you where you was like, I'm gonna do this? Okay. What tell tell me about that though? Well, okay. Uh, started back in when I was in high school with my high mm-hmm. school art teacher. He's a really good guy, really mm-hmm. great guy. Shout out, Mr. Brand Horse. Hey, He's probably not listening to this, but whatever. <laughs> but um. I remember I was showing him because I was deep in the anime back then. Because okay. like, because like, okay, the the nineteen ninety two. Yeah, huh? What anime were you into? Dragon Ball Z, of course. What? Yeah. Well, no. Okay, back in ninety two. Uh huh. UPN. Right. Was a channel, right? The okay. Truth. <laughs> UPN was a there, truth. There was but a go channel. Ahead. There was a channel called UPN back right, in the day. Right. That's so, not a CW. But go ahead. Yeah. U UPN used to have. Dragon Ball Z, which I didn't watch at the time, but they mm-hmm. had Sailor Moon, and I love Sailor, Sailor Moon. Like the transformation sequence, my mom would look at the transformation. She'd be like, "Well, what's the bad guy doing while she's twirling around in the glitter?" I'm like, See, "I was like, mommy, it happens in an instant." That's what I'm. That's what I tell people. This it's is like, for you. This yeah. is the prettiest for you. They're like slowing it down so you can enjoy it. Yeah, I, I think uh, what is that? The cartoon Winx Club actually showed a, a like because they have fairies that transform, right, right, right. and they showed it. They finally showed a fairy like she wasn't a main character, but yeah. she was dressed regular, and all she does is like boom, and, and then she transforms, there. and it's then on that's there. It. ready to go. And they were like, that's how it actually happens. They're yeah, like, oh, but they're, we slow it down. They're like, do do do, regular clothes. Oh crap, a bad guy. Boom, I'm transformed. Yeah. But the the transformation sequence is for you because yeah. it's cool. And yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, back in '92 they had uh, that, and then uh, Tsunami came around in like Toonami. what, like '97, uh, I think, when it was hosted I by Multar. What year? Yeah, well, this, no, this is was, the first. Wait, wait, who was it hosted by at first? Multar from Space Ghost. Really? Yeah, no. he, the guy in the helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah from I Space remember. Ghost, it used to be hosted by Multar. He yeah. used to send out the Clive robots to get broadcasts uh, of TV shows to yeah. bring back, so he could broadcast it across. Oh my God, Tsunami! So like, Tsunami, tsunami, was tsunami dope. went a little deep with it. Tsunami, but, was yeah. Dope. He used to have the Clive robots, and he uh-huh. used to. Have, it used to be. Um, Ghost Planet, or uh-huh. he used to broadcast from a planet, not a ship. Right, 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 right. And I don't right. know when they fired Multar or when they retired him, but and then, then Tom got, took over yeah, from Tom the ship over. Absolution, and he's yeah. broadcasting shows yeah, 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 yeah. from his ship. It's like See, a, I remember Tom, but yeah. So Tsunami, this, this was the first version of Tom with the stomach, with the stomach, yeah, with the radioactive <laughs> stomach. Yeah, yes. Fat Tom, I miss Fat Tom sometimes. Yeah, but no, Tsunami. Okay, they had uh, when Tsunami came around, mm-hmm. they were like. They bought Sailor Moon, the rights to Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z. And when Dragon Ball Z, I'm not going to lie, when they first started advertising Dragon Ball Z, I was like, is it going to be about Dodgeball? Like, do- <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why my Why mind... did the Power Balls look like Dodgeballs? Okay, you- okay. On, on regular Nintendo, uh-huh. there is this, this game called Shaolin Dodgeball or okay. something like that. Okay. And the guys on that video game look uh-huh. like Krillin. Oh. They they have bald some of them have bald heads and right. no noses and they got the dots, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when I saw Krillin, I was like, is this about that video game? Cause uh yes, on that video game you could throw the dodgeball so hard that it bursts into flames and it'll wang the other guy oh. and he turns into an angel and floats up when he dies. Wow. Okay. Now, okay. I used to All love right. this freaking no, video this game. Like Me and my brother used to, it was. It was like it was dodgeball. Right. You know how crazy uh, Asian people are for like dodgeball and weird stuff like that. Like okay. they find like the they find like our throwaway sports and be like, yes, let's be about this now. <laughs> like so, ping pong. Yeah, like aren't, ping pong aren't, like, and the, dodgeball. Like they're like this yeah, with that. So they're like gangster ping pong. Man. So go ahead. tsunami got Dragon Ball Z and all these animes. That's when I started like an anime and. 
that's when the internet was sort of new, and right. I was able to have it at home and right. look up anime and fan fiction and all this. All right. So anyway, so let's so get back. Get, yeah, let's so get circle full circle here. Full circle. So You're in high, anime. high school, I'm uh-huh. fully immersed in anime. I mm-hmm. read manga because they brought it to the states. Like they had like Paradise Kiss, Mars, nice. like all those rom com ones that go right. nowhere. Right. Oh my god, I cannot reread them today. They go nowhere. <laughs> they go nowhere. <laughs> Jesus, nothing happens in those. But I okay. love I I love the memory of them. Right. So I'm like fully immersed in all this this Asian culture, like wearing chopsticks in my hair like an idiot, like all this stuff. Okay, so uh, the internet you know, comes. We, we all yeah. did some stuff when yeah. we were teenagers that we regret to yeah, this day. Yeah, definitely. But go ahead. Well, no, the internet comes around, and all of a sudden, you don't have to get a magazine to read fan mm-hmm. fiction because no, that's you how don't. you used to do fan fiction. You used to send it into a magazine, and the magazine would They'll print publish it, out. it. Yeah, yeah. But who needs the, who needs that if maybe crap? So. Fanfiction.net, writing, guys, write, right. okay. write, writing fan fiction, stuff uh-huh. like that, and creating fan characters, of course. I have right. at least 50 Dragon Ball Z fan characters that what? went nowhere. They went nowhere and they were useless. What? Give me what? Oh, God. Do you they're, remember? They're, they're always, uh, I think her name was Miyuki. They, uh-huh. they always had some kind of vaguely Asian sounding name. They uh-huh. came from outer space and uh-huh. they always married Trunks in the end. Well, well really? <laughs> Trunks was your crush? Yeah, so you look Wait. like, oh my God, when Tsunami got that second season, I was like, when Trunks showing up? I do have to say, Trunks was the best dress. Yeah. I have a thing for fashion. And, and whenever I watch stuff, I like, but yeah. then when I freaking saw Trunks, I was like, He's got the Yo, best outfit. Got he the got the jeans. He got the and the shoes. He got the sword. The hair. I was like, every, every, this man yeah, knows. Everybody else is wearing like hammer pants and pajamas. Everybody like, is. <laughs> what's he up was, with this? He, was a, he, he gets my award for for fashionista so, of Dragon Ball Z. But yeah. Go ahead. So circling back to what made me start doing the comic because I was doing fan characters galore. Right. Mm-hmm. My high school art teacher was like, I was showing them to him, and he was right. like, he was like, you know how art teachers would be like, half the kids in art class are just there. Mm. Because they got to be, right? Right, right, right. But he was like, oh, crap, this girl could actually draw you pretty well. Let right. me, and, he, and I was like, oh, this is a fan character for this, that, and the other. And he blew my head wide open with this question. He was like, why don't you create your own? And I was like, create my own what? He's like, your own universe. Like, just create your own original thing. Like, come mm. up with, like, you know, an idea. Your own, like, you right. have your own characters already. Just right. put them into their own thing. Yeah. And write a story. Because you write the stories, you and do the characters. And I was like, Oh my god. <laughs> Mind I, blown. I can create my <laughs> own instead of adhering to the rules of this universe that somebody else created. I can create my own. So Holy how old crap. were you? How old were you at this point? I was probably about 15, 16 15, when I met it this is, guy. It just boom. And he was like, Why don't you create your own universe? And I was like, Oh my god, I could totally do you that. You could totally do that. Oh my god. So okay. <laughs> So the way that Kiddo came about, because uh-huh. I was working on one that was like a Magical Girl series. Magical Girl, that's classic. And oh my god, there was just so many rules to it. Because anime had so many, so of... much depth and it. I filled up like two sketchbooks with all the stuff for this. For the Magical Girls. Yeah. But okay. then, like, what was it? My senior year, I got the crush on this guy. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. <laughs> his, name, his name was Elliot. Okay. And he had gorgeous hair. He had like the trunks hair. He uh-huh. had like the, like just, it wasn't purple or anything, but right. his hair was just effing gorgeous. Okay, like just, okay. Like, just flexing hair. Got the dude. trunks haircut. Yeah. Okay. So, he, he I, I just thought he was, like, the cutest thing in the world. So, I was like, how am I going to get this dude to pay attention to me? Right. I was like, I know. I, I went up, to, like, because I had been friends with him and all right. his friends and stuff. And I was like, I was like, one day, I was like, hey, would you mind if I made you a character for my comic book? <laughs> and, of course, when I wanted to use him as a character, he, of course, that's when he starts paying attention. Yeah, he was like, like, yeah, whoa, cool. Right? Like, cool, yes. High five. Yes. High five like, on the game. Put yeah, game yeah. down. Put, put that in my Hunter pickup lines. What? You want, you want a girl to pay attention to you? You want a guy to pay attention to you? Be like, yo, I'm making a comic book. Would you mind if I made you a character? This for like, all the black that's, girls. That's... that's, that's, that's all the blur girls out there, you know what to do. She's giving you the playbook now. This is the playbook. Because right. that's some smooth shit. Like, nobody pays attention to artists until you're like, hey, I'll make you a character. And they're like, yes. Spend yeah, because, all the, like, spend playing. time with me all the time now so I can get it right. Like, so I'm not hanging around you. It's not creepy that I'm like all up in your face 24-7. Yes. You know, that's brilliant because you're playing to the narcissism that most people really that have about really them themselves. Yep. You know? 
That's yep. brilliant. Oh yeah, okay. I'm, a- I'm actually quite smooth. <laughs> I, s- I see, I see the smoothness. You know, I'm so- actually quite smooth. So, <laughs> so of good. course, of course, he didn't fit into the magical girl series. So I was like, all right, you sit on the back one. You, you didn't want to make him no, like I was, a. I was a- like, I, I, he wanted about my, be my tuxedo mask. That's what I was nah, asking. You nah, didn't nah, want nah, him to nah, be nah. a tuxedo mask. Nah. No. Okay. Nah. All right. I was like, he wouldn't okay. fit in. I was like, there was already too much stuff going on with that mm. magical girl series, and right. I was like. And at the time, I, I was like, oh, I can't draw good enough to make this into a whole thing anyway. Because I was right. looking at professional manga and stuff and going, right. damn, I'm not at that level yet. Yeah. So I created another one. I was like, there's no reason I can't create like Something another new. series. Very true. And I was like, because, yeah, I got into that mindset. It's like, oh, you can only create one universe. I was like, no, no create more. As like, many as you, you want. On? It's your world. Like, create more. You can create as many as you want. That go nowhere. Right. So that's how um, Emil came to be. Ah, so, so that's who Emil so the is. Dude it's this dude is Emil. Yes, he's that's, your he's your trunks. Yes, he has okay. the haircut. Emil he has still the has haircut. Emil still has he's that the that, that bob haircut. That, yes, that that, that that sharp edge. Haircut. Right, 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 right. And the like his nose and his nose has like a little bend in it. That's how the guy used to look and stuff yeah. like that. So like I did I he like it? Did it work? Oh yeah, he totally liked oh, it at the time. Shit. Like oh, shit. I haven't seen him in like. <laughs> seven years but the right. last time I saw him he was like hey how's that character doing I was like yo you remember it over awesome. the years over the years he's, he still he's, held up he's doing great that's what's up so yeah that's how Emil became created and uh-huh. I of course the, the female protagonist had to look like me of course but I had, I had to be like subtle with it so I was like Maybe I should get. Maybe I should. Maybe I should uh, turn the the colors to extremes. Like I made her slightly darker than me, and I made her hair redder than mine. Right, right, my, right. My hair is actually like reddish brown. And right, it's, like it's all over. Hoping, so. hoping that he would decipher all that. So, and be like yeah. one day, like, oh my gosh, this is me and her. Right. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. <laughs> He never did, and I never brought it up. So I was like, "Whatever, let him go. I don't care." Right. Like, I got way too much into the comic book to be like, you "I want to date this dude." I was like, "Screw that." You got something creative <laughs> out of the whole ordeal. Out which of the is whole ordeal. So yeah, indeed. The the first comic that Kittle was a part of, actually, they mm-hmm. were like anthropomorphic. Mm-hmm. Everybody had ears and tails. Mm. That whole anime that was like still very anime. Right, 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 right. And I was like, "Well, how do I explain why she's a normal person?" And I made her half anthropomorphic, half human. She mm. just looked all the way human until something happened. And then she would And turn. she grew her ears and tails when mm-hmm. she got super angry or something. He got right. shot in the face or stabbed in the face or something. Wow. And it made her go berserk and it made her transform. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it was a story about how she was like the last human on earth in this mm-hmm. world of anthropomorphic people. Right, right, right. And I was like, all right, this story got a little weird. So <laughs> I put that on the back burner and right. went to... I created... I, I picked up the Magical Girls again, but mm-hmm. because I was... Around 2004, I mm-hmm. started reading American comic books now. Right. Because I was like, they actually do stuff, and it's fully colored, and mm-hmm. they cost 12 bucks, but it's like five issues in there. Because manga, I was like, it's $10. I read this in a day, and it's not colored, and yeah. half of the drawings aren't finished. I became, like, annoyed with manga, because I right. bought one, and I was like, what is... This drawing is crap, and I can't yeah. return it, because right. the bookstore is going out of business. Right. So... Geez, screw that noise. So uh-huh. I started buying. So you started reading American I started doing comics. American stuff. Now, because... what, were you, what did you start reading American here in the U.S.? What comic books were you reading? Uh, I think I started with Teen Titans, Teen a Titans kids is game, good. a kids yeah. game. Uh huh. And that one was I caught that like a kids game is a, like a trade. It's what they named the trade paperback. Yeah. I only buy trade paperbacks because of reasons. I don't yeah. like the ads. Yeah. So the kids game started like. They were, like, the Teen Titans were just now coming back together after mm-hmm. some cataclysmic event. Mm-hmm. They were just now deciding, hey, maybe we should be a group again. Right. And that was a good jumping off point. Like, that's the problem with most American comics. They go and go and go and go and go. Where do you hop in at? Like, right. it's like a, it's like a game of double dutch. In, it's like double like... dutch. It's like, where, <laughs> hey, I gotta wait until I hop in. Gotta wait. Gotta wait. Gotta wait. All right, hop in here. And then you gotta go get all the back issues. Like, it's just, yeah. Yeah. So I like that was a good place to hop in at mm. without having to know any of the back issues. Like they introduce all the characters every yes. time. Yes. So like it's the same thing with X Men. I was mm. like, I, I not recently. That was like a year ago that I started reading X Men because I was like, I love Nightcrawler. Yeah. Nightcrawler is my favorite. He's so I was man. like, well, where do I start with him? And I started at uh, M Day. Okay. M Day is a great place to start reading mm. uh, X Men comics. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So I put Kiddo on the back burner because I was like, eh, I don't want to do anthropomorphic crap because mm-hmm. furries can be a little weird and mm-hmm. you get all involved in that. Yeah. All they, of a sudden you look little... up and you're like, what am I, how did I end yeah. up here? You, so you're I, like super popular in a whole nother world of the internet that you have no yeah. idea about. And I'm just like, mm, 
let me put that on the back burner because people with ears and tails, it started to get weird. It yeah. started to get weird. So I put that on the back burner, picked the Magical Girl one up sure. again. But I was like, well, the Magical Girl one was about vampires to begin with. Okay. They came from like the dark side of the moon or okay. something like that. Okay. And, like, um, it was very Sailor Moonish. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was very Sailor Moonish. But instead of the moon being a good thing, it was like it was a bad a, thing where right. all these freaking vampires are coming from. Okay. So I was like, all right, let's take out the magical girl part and make it more American gritty. Because American comic books are yes. decidedly more gritty oh, than, definitely. than the magical girl Japanese Yeah, stuff. I don't even think they have so, a magical girl genre here in the U.S. They don't. Yeah. Well, I think of... Uh, 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 the Miss America... Not Miss America. Uh, America Chavez? No, the other one. Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Marvel is as close as you're going to come to like she a is. kind of a magical girl. She is. Vibe. She is like an American. Co- oh, yeah. Uh, and like, then, yeah, co- America yeah. does it too because she's like, she can create the portal and then like, yeah, she can definitely. It. But like, she's, she's, cool. she's a different kind of magical girl. Yeah, she's a <laughs> different kind. Because I was going to be like, yeah, yo, definitely. American Shop is like, she cusses. She ain't about that shit. She, she like, ain't. She's like, she's not here for any of their bull crap. She's exactly, like, so, back up. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Lucky so. was get, getting googly eyes at her. She was like, you better back up. You better right. stop looking at me. I'm going right. to poke your eyes Slow out, Slow down, bro. Slow down. Back up. So I made it more gritty. I got rid of the magical girl mm-hmm. element, but kept. The magic, because mm-hmm. like, uh, turns out that uh, the one in the vampire comic, she's under like this spell from an evil witch. She doesn't remember who she is. Mm-hmm. Turns mm-hmm. out she's married to this vampire that's looking for her. Like mm-hmm. he's not just looking for her to kill her because she's mm-hmm. a hunter of vampires. Mm-hmm. Like it was a whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I did that for years, but then I was like, back burner again because I keep I keep doing that. So I went I, okay. I went back to kiddo. I cannot remember why I went back to kiddo. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to do superpower people. I was like that could go somewhere. Right, but. I was like, uh, I had created Sonya and Darkly as mm-hmm. their own separate story. They were in their own separate story. And then I okay. created... Um, Darkly's a really cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dark- er- people end up loving Darkly because Very he has cool the hottest girlfriend. And he's just like this... I was going to say... He's like this 5'5 he's like five, five Mexican nerd. I was going to say, like... like <laughs> that's when I, was, I kept reading it. And I was, I was like, yo, she's hot. Like, oh, yeah. Is- so- Sonya... Yeah. Is- was- she's... She's okay. like she got the thickness. She 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 that, speaks with a Jamaican patois. Like <laughs> I saw the 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 because you know on on each uh, comic book when you open it the first page like the other side of the cover yeah, you always have some picture. sort of a, a poster and when I saw the one with Darkly and Sonya I was like yo yeah. <laughs> yeah. He so, Starkly nice. is like all of my dudes except for Emil. Emil is not smooth at all. But most of the dudes, no, nah, he's not. He's he's yeah. he's hopeless. But like most of the dudes in my comic book, they kind of smooth. Like Darkly is this little dude. Like it's because Darkly is is partially based off of Prince, mm. and Prince was this this five four mm. dude wearing heels and jewelry and lingerie and people freaking loved him because he was Prince was smooth. a magical man the way we have he, magical girls yeah Prince he was, was a magical, he was a magical man. man yeah so I, I didn't even realize how much I based Darkly off of him Top until of him. years later and I sat back and I was like well mm. okay all, all of these characters spawn from me having a crush on people. On people? <laughs> hey, look. Emil, Emil art, spawned, art imitates yeah, life, it man. Does. Do Emil, it. Emil spawned because of a crush on a, on a, on a guy at school. Mm-hmm. Darkly spawned because I I love Prince, one. Indeed. And me then too. I, I started reading Johnny the Homicidal Maniac by uh, Jonah Vasquez. Okay. And he is also like five, five, like little precious man. Like. <laughs> As a woman who's like tops out, I top out at like five nine. All right. these men are so tiny compared to me. I'm right, just right, like, right. but you're so precious. I can fit you in my back pocket. I right, still right, love right. you, even though you're tiny. <laughs> I love you. You're so cute. Right. So I developed a crush on Jonah Vasquez because he, like, yeah. If you look at Darkly, he looks a lot like Jonah Vasquez with mm. the glasses and the nose and right. the purple hair. Right. And he's tiny, but he's a, he's a little bit pudgy. Like he's a, like Darkly has a little bit of a pudge because he sits behind a computer all day. Right, 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 right. That makes sense. But he's still like this little Lothario. Like, mm-hmm. like that's where the Lothario comes in from Prince because Jonah mm-hmm. Vasquez is actually notoriously reclusive. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't like people. Like he's like Ugh. so. Yeah. yeah, but that's where the Lothario thing comes in. So I was like, well, what if you mix but Jonah Vasquez with Prince? Right. So yeah. So that's how you got. Darkly. So that's how you got Definitely. that, and then like of Ugly course, too. and then of course Sonya. 
is of course another you know not standing not self inserted me but she has some of my personalities like she right. has clothes and I mean, jewelry people and say stuff. the same they say every character has a little bit of you yeah you know and I used so. to have my hair cut like hers oh so yeah, and then uh, and then uh, the Jamaican part comes from uh, my mom is actually Jamaican so oh, okay. I'm actually half Jamaican so you add like stuff like that into there then you have a character it creates a nice character but they yeah. had they had their own story where they were both writers or something they weren't super powered yet. Mm. And then, like, I put them on the back burner and started doing this other thing because I developed a crush on Lisa Edelstein from House. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's who Dell is modeled after. Oh. She's modeled after Lisa Edelstein, who is also a very tiny, precious woman. She's only you like have a five, thing for, five. For a tiny people. For, for people who are short of me. You see my best friend? She was there with me at the she table. She was very tiny. She, she is so much smaller than me. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. Like, the, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm usually larger than everybody. So that's how mm. these couples come about. Right, like, right, that's, right. That's right. why, I, and then, of course, Zen is like, like Zen Love, yes. her, girl, her girlfriend yes. is like a little bit of me. She's yes. like she's got all this hair and yes. she's huge. Yeah, yeah. Like she's so much bigger than her girlfriend, but her yeah. girlfriend is the one with super that's, strength. That's the one I was gonna say. Well, um, as the issue, the last issue, you see um, Darkly and Sonya, mm-hmm. but the issue before that, you see Zen and Dell. Uh-huh. And when I saw that, I was like, Yo, Zen, Zen is. Nice, like yeah. <laughs> Zen is nice. So Zen was, I was like, because like, I remember yeah, I was but... reading that next to you, and then when I saw, I was like, I like this. Yeah, this is I like this. <laughs> but yeah, well, no, yeah, most of my girls are pretty. Well, Zen and Sonya are mm-hmm. thick because they're they're kind of modeled after me. They're bigger than most everybody, right? <sighs> I'm kind of. But I also than most like people, I also so. like what you're doing in terms of. Not all the girls um, have the, the same, same body, body type yeah. or same Kid, height. Kiddo is actually you know? smaller. Yeah, yeah. Not just because she's younger. She's just a smaller body type. Yeah. She's actually modeled after my friend that was with me at the table. She's, gotcha. she, she's short yeah, like she's that. Yeah, she's short. She's short. Like, her brothers are, like, taller than her. Mm-hmm. You know? So, I, I've noticed that. Like, she's shorter she's than short. almost everybody else. But yeah. she's, like, she's like the meanest one. <laughs> like she is, She can get mean. I, I think that's why she, <laughs> she matches very well with, uh, with Emil. Yeah. Yeah, she matches. Because Emil mm-hmm. is really mean. Me too. He can, yeah, he can he's hurt. Like he gets he's, the fire, mm-hmm. and so she's so like, "I'm not taking your full crap." So yeah, that match. that uh, um, kiddo's attitude actually comes from my best friend because mm-hmm. people are like, "Oh, she looks like you in the face," but then like she acts like Lisa. She acts like Lisa. Lisa, yeah. who was also at the booth <laughs> when we were at Atlanta Science Expo. Yeah, just for everybody listening. But go yeah, ahead. And Lisa is li- like she's literally the the definition of. Oops, I got an email. She's literally the definition <laughs> of. Uh, she's literally like if you think little scrappy, like that's that's Lisa. She's little and she's scrappy. Like she like. Most of the time, I'm pulling her away from the fight. I'm like, you know, you're tiny, right? Like, right. Get back, and she's like, I don't need to back down. Like, she's like, I'll mess you up. Like, yeah. just yeah. So that's that's where most Hilarious. of Kiddo's personality comes, comes from. from is right. like, I'm small, but I'll mess you up. Like, okay. I'll mess you up. Your height means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's up. So, so so let's talk about the first issue, right? Okay. So so you you got all this. You got all these story. When did you actually have the first issue done? Like, when did you, first of all, when did you sit down and was like, what were you using to make all these different comics? Were you just sketching? I was just sketching them out. Yeah, I was just sketching them out and they would go, like, their individual storylines went nowhere. Okay. But then when I picked up Kiddo and I was like, picked up Kiddo for the second time, Uh I was like, okay, I need her to be special without being, like, half Fox, because that's stupid. Right. So, (laughs) because that's Uh, dumb. That's the dumbest thing. What, shout out to Naruto? Naruto is a... He's got the fox demon in him. He's not half fox. Uh, how about, how about Kurama did? Kurama from from. Um, okay, yeah, Yu Yu half, that, the, yeah. The half demon thing. I was like, okay, you, you you're cool with the half demon rather than yeah. just the half fox. I yeah, get it. I, Go ahead. I was My cool bad. with like half demons and stuff like that. But I was like, well, I don't want them to be demons because red is about demons. The vampire right. one that's about demons. This right. needs to be about something different. Okay, and so I was go like, ahead. well, how Give does me. she? How was she? How is she different? How is she special? What's her mm-hmm. conflict, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, okay, whatever she is, she's got to be the most powerful being in her universe. Just, okay. just to make her interesting. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, what can she do? And that's where Dragon Ball Z comes around because she has mm. energy. I call it energy manipulation. Okay. So she can shoot it from her hand. She can mm-hmm. use it to fly. She mm-hmm. can absorb it from other things. And mm. a lot of that is Dragon Ball Z. Like Goku, DBZ, make, yeah. Goku makes the Genki Dama by absorbing the energy from other things. And yeah. sh- like they shoot stuff out of their hands yeah. like all the She's time. She's able to do and that I'm, immediately. Yes, like yeah, just pull and, and, and release. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like she doesn't realize she's doing it. She thinks she's just shooting stuff out of her hands. She's actually absorbing it from mm-hmm. around her and... Mm-hmm. 
doing it that way. Mm-hmm. And it actually, like, if she doesn't expel it, it, like, just, it stays within her. Mm-hmm. Like, she's basically a ball of energy. Right? Okay, okay, that's I hear her, you. That's basically her superpower. So I was right. like, all right, her superpower's pretty laid down and cool. Mm-hmm. And then I, I had to go through and give everybody else superpowers. Right. And, of course, like, I did the, the funny thing where, um... Whereas over Dell, she's this mm-hmm. tiny little five four Jewish woman. And she's, she's strong. super strong. All right. Like you wouldn't and expect I like her. that. Yeah, I love that. You wouldn't yeah. expect like this tiny little woman to be yeah. super strong. And I, it, that's, I, that's that's the Jessica Jones effect. Like yeah. everybody rolls up on Jessica Jones and then she just grabs you and you fall because she's that strong. Yeah. yeah so yep, I, I like yep, that. Because yep. I, ne- I, ne- I don't understand why Superman has mm-hmm. all these big muscles mm-hmm. when nothing is heavy to him. Yeah. How do you work out? Do you work out under a red light or what like how does he get all these technically superman should be like this skinny nerd like he's supposed to be not this big hulking dude look look it is we can do a whole another episode on superman <laughs> all right because 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 i ask that question to people all the time and they're just like well maybe he lifts like a neutron star or something i'm like no, yeah, he does y'all, not. y'all no, are he does reaching not. y'all right? are reaching he does not he's because if 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 you explain the powers and he gets his power from the radiation, the power doesn't make him work out, right? Does yeah, it? it does. Yeah, everything right. is super light to him. Yeah, He's yeah, super yeah. strong. I don't so know what... Technically, he should he, be this thin newspaper nerd, which is he's it, supposed are you, to be. Are you just saying that everybody from Krypton is built that way? If Maybe. you're telling us that, then I'm like, cool, that's Maybe. genetics. Because they, they were all like, he but, grew up on a farm. I'm like, but his dad isn't jacked. His yeah, dad, his dad is, is not jacked. He's a regular... He's a regular... Y'all tripping. Y'all stay tripping with it. But, <laughs> Superman aside, on, I was like, on. I was like, okay, wouldn't it be funny if this tiny little woman, like, uh-huh. she's in charge, right? Like, what's her power? I want her to be super strong because she's super That's tiny. That's good. And then like, uh, Zen love super speed. I was just like, eh, throwing throwing powers out there, super speed, right? And then like uh, with Darkly, I was like, you know what? Let's make him a nerd with the with the glad. Let's make him like super. You need smart. a tech nerd. You need a guy in the chair. Yeah, he's and, the guy in the chair. And then it turns out like he's from a family of mm. super smart people. Like that's, they're, that's they're what all I smart, like. and they're right. like him and all his siblings. His mom. They and, actually understand his, the stuff he does. His dad. Right. Yeah, they actually understand it because like you know, spoiler alert, they're super too. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. That, that's a, <laughs> that's a spoiler alert. If your mm-hmm. parent, if, if if even one of your parents is a super, chances you're, are you're no, not chances are you, you won't are. have a superpower. Okay, if just one of them is a super. You you're going to have superpowers. Mm-hmm. Passed down genetically like that. Mm-hmm. Which brings us to Sonya. Mm-hmm. Both of her parents were supers, right? But mm-hmm. both of Kittle's parents are supers. But mm-hmm. she only has her dad's power. Mm-hmm. And the okay. boys have the mom's power. Yeah, they do. That okay. that split. Yeah. But with Sonya, she's, she my, she's my little snowflake. She she has both of her parents' she's powers. She's my little snowflake. <laughs> she's, 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 she's my One little anomaly. Kind. Yeah, right. she's my little anomaly. And you yes. think people are going to come after her, but it actually, it turns out that the kiddos are one of they want to yeah. get to. So she has two powers, and they they don't conflict with each other. But if she loses control, she'll be exploding people's heads and like flowing away. Like right, just, right, right. Like yeah, it's it's hard for her to control both at once. And okay. that that's Sonya's story. Okay. So, so after handing out everybody's powers, I was uh-huh. like, all right. So what's the story behind here? And I, I like a lot of people compared to X Men and the uh-huh. Civil War thing. It's mm-hmm. just like you're forced to register yourself. But mm-hmm. I'm like, in X Men, they didn't force you to register yourself. No. It's like an option. Yeah. Either you can or you can't. Like yeah. they'll still allow you, you to be bop around. Now you can, in you my can live un- under the radar. <laughs> yeah. In my universe, if they find out you got powers, mm-hmm. you're going to jail. Okay. Or you could work for them hunting down more of your own kind. Okay. Okay. Like they ain't no choice when it comes to the agency. And mm-hmm. that's where the good guys come in and they're like, Well, we're people. We can't help being born this way. We shouldn't be in prison because of it. Right. And that speaks to like real life stuff. It's like, of course, yeah. yeah. Because it's like I was it's born gotta, this way, gotta, dude. Like I can't change mirror, that. It's got yeah, a it's got it's got a mirror like a real struggle, so people can relate to it. can relate to it. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, what did I used to get teased about? Uh, I used to get teased about being different for mm-hmm. liking different stuff, for mm-hmm. being light skinned, for mm-hmm. I don't know, for just anything under under the sun that these people could think of. And yeah. I was like, well, why? I I thought about it one day. I asked this person. I was like, well, why are you picking on me for that? Because you're different. Like, that that was the base of it. Right. Because you're different. Mm. So you would have me go somewhere else just because I'm slightly different than you. Mm. I'm like, you know, other people, they're others. Yeah. They're others. <laughs> she said there are artists. Yes, there are others. Like, everyone is different. Dude, that's yeah. where it comes to, like, yeah. comes back to that, I don't want to live a life that's been lived a mm. hundred times already. Like, mm. you're literally doing the same thing as your parents. Yeah. Oh, my God. Grow a personality. So, <laughs> yeah, that's how... Um, 
Because, yeah, all the characters had their own little separate stories. And I was like, they went nowhere. Right. So, But when We're I combined them, together. When I combined them all mm-hmm. and gave them powers and gave them this conflict, it started, like, just it laid it out in front of me. I was like, oh, this is good. Mm. This is good stuff. So it is, it, that's how it came together. Yeah. Long, okay. long story short. That's how it came together. Separate crap came together. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's, that's good. It's good. To, I, now that you say it, I, I think it's pretty dope because I didn't think it was an amalgam of, like, a few ideas oh, yeah. that you had over the years that, that culminated into this you know um as as i read i just thought it was it was very very funny but it it felt i don't want to say it feels like a like um have you seen insecure nah but the like I, ca- I catch some of the episodes yeah yeah it feels like a h it feels i don't want to say hbo show but it just feels like a a show a, a slice of life type of show yeah it's like, just that the like people, shit happens yeah it's just that the people in there yeah, have powers. You know, it's like, yeah, it's so, like shit happens and it keeps happening, but roll with it. Like, yeah, it's gotta life's gotta keep <laughs> it's rolling. Not gonna stop happening. It's gotta so roll. Let's do so, this thing. <laughs> so, so yeah, I thought it was pretty good. And and the the you have a a few. Not only do you have a variety, like in terms of what the characters look like, you have different races. You have also different sexual orientations, and you have different body types. Which, yeah. So, that's definitely... It's incredibly diverse people. Like, I've right. had people ask me, eh, why do gay people have to be in it? I'm like, because ba- gay people live in the world. They do. <laughs> like, just, like, why, like, yeah. I've had, actually had people like, well, not all your characters all black? And I'm just like, why are they all of color? I'm like, because of color, color, color people live in the world. Yeah. We live here. Like, yeah. and then, of course, it gets down to the representation thing, because, yeah. of course, look at me. Yeah. I'm super. Yeah. I'm like high yellow. So what you gonna do? So I'm just like, of course, <laughs> gotta... of course my character is gonna be black from the jump. But yeah. They're not all gonna be that same generic brown color yeah. that you find in comic books. Yeah, like, which, which is... let me get a brown, let me get a light, let me get a red bone, let me right. get a high There's yellow. There's a variety. There's a yeah. variety. And then yeah. of course people question their hair. It's like, mm. oh, their hair is so long and straight. Mm. Well, I'm like, well, Two of the girls are half white. Like, mm. Sonya's half white and mm. so is Kiddo. They're both yeah, half yeah. white. Right. But Zen is all the way, like, black. She, yeah. I think I made her black and, like, this much native because she's got all that wavy yeah. hair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm just like, well, it runs again. gamut. Like, not all black people got afros and dreads and, and the Holly Berry <laughs> short haircut. Like, it it changes. Yeah. So I'm just like, well, I mean, yeah. that, that's that's gonna come. Uh, people yeah, are always no. gonna, uh, but but I, you know, I think I actually had somebody ask me like, why is her grandfather white? And I was like, what color was your granddad? Like, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of drawing from life a yeah. little bit because yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, when I look back at pictures of my family, I'm yeah. like, that dude looks awfully white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, I mean, it, is it black and white? But this dude is super duper light. Yeah. Like. Yeah, that's that kind of family secret that's like, oh, turns out that Peepa was said, white. Like, he said, your family secret. I thought it was a family secret. It's not but, really a family secret, yeah. man. Oops. Turns yeah. out your grandfather was this color. Yeah. Like, she, like she, she never knew that part of her family because, mm. like, it, yeah, because, it gets in, it gets into it. There's there's a reason behind it all. But, right, right. So yeah. now, what now? When you finish the first comic, right? Mm-hmm. It's done. You good? You loved it? You're like this is ready, right? <laughs> yeah. How did you go about putting it out in the world? Well, it started out as a web comic. Okay. It start it started life as a web comic, mm-hmm. which used to update every Sunday. What website did you put it on? Uh, it used to be the first couple of ones were on DeviantArt, oh. and then I would put it on Tapastic mm-hmm. or something like that. Right. And then like the, all these other ones come out the woodwork. It's like, hey, we do comic books too and stuff like that. Like uh, Line Tune, I think was mm-hmm. the last one that I was like. You know what? If I'm doing all this, let me go remaster and put it and out. Put to print. it out. But okay. it started out as a web comic because, right. well, back then mm-hmm. I was like, eh. No, it's, it's better it's, to go that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, well, let me gain the followers because mm-hmm. how you gonna like the comic book? You can't read it. So right. the first go around, it was like that extremely rough. Like, like I said, I had been re- I've remastered mm-hmm. up to issue like six now. Yeah. Which means if six is done, then seven is brand new. Right. Seven is where I stopped to go back to remaster one All the through others. six. Right. So when one first came out, it 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 wasn't very structured at all. Like mm. I was like I was just flying by the seat of my pants. I didn't really script anything. That's I would usually just, how to I would first. Just, I would just draw out, and if it if it on one page, that would be great. If it didn't, that'd be great. I wasn't counting pages. I mm. wasn't really. Like, yeah, it was very unstructured. It's but your, then first, again, it it's was your a, first go round. Yeah, it was my first go at, like, a serious comic. Cause, okay. Because Red actually did make it to, like, two and a half issues before That's I good. was like, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before I was like, I need to get better at drawing. So right. I took some time off, got better at drawing, started mm-hmm. doing illegal tender. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the first issue, and people liked it, so I was like, okay, second issue. I was like, I gotta be more structured. Like, people, like, you gotta, like, because the first issue, it would just come out whenever the hell I felt like it. Right. Whenever, whenever I felt like doing a page, I mm-hmm. would do one mm-hmm. and post it. So you would put it and out pe- page by page? Yeah. Okay. And people would be like, oh, this is good. When's the next one coming out? And I'd be like, Psh. Next one? <laughs> I don't know. Whenever I feel like, whenever I feel like drawing it and not just, like, drawing fan art or just the standalone images that I right. did for the comic and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I, I would look up stuff online because people know everything a lot. But right. no, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I looked it up and people were like, well, most viewers like a schedule. Like most uh, fans like a schedule. They don't want to hear, I don't know when the next one's coming yeah. out. That's for fan fiction. You can do that crap for fan fiction. But if you, you know. want fans to really hold on to your your idea, your story, your whatever... <laughs> You got to have a schedule. You got to tell them when the next one's coming out so they can expect it and come back. Yeah. They're not going to hang around your page. Right. Just hoping to find, hoping to catch this next issue. So I was like, all right. And uh, I used to have this job where Mm -hmm. I would, I used to work for NBA TV, actually. Oh, nice. And it was a lot of sitting around on Sundays. Mm Mm-hmm. So if, when I would sit around on Sundays, I would crank out a page and post it. So uh, that's how the Sunday schedule came up. Because it worked with your actual yeah, schedule. and it Perfect. worked out. So I was yeah. like, all right, so Sunday is page day. Mm-hmm. So that's how that started out. So it used to update every Sunday. And mm-hmm. then, like I said, when I got to like issue the end of issue number six, I was like, you know what? It's time to start charging for this. So I went back. <laughs> and, and, I, and I went back because right. I was like, I was about to, like, you know, say, just print it how it is. But mm-hmm. then I was like, you know what? I've, like, over the years, my mm-hmm. artwork has gotten better, so I need to remaster. Or we'll go back and do it. Right. Because I was like, ugh, these old pages. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, ugh, they're so very basic. Like, I had, so, by, the, by the end of issue six, I had gone completely digital. Oh. Because the first issues were drawn on paper. With, okay. With a drafting pencil, a pencil, and up ink. to the up till now, you were still releasing online on that Sunday schedule. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. But up, at, well, no, that was like what two years ago that mm-hmm. I put it on hold. Took every took most of everything down and was mm-hmm. like, "Yo, it's in for remastering. If you want to see the new remaster and read it again, you gotta buy it." Right. Start First taste that is free. Money. Yeah, I know, right? First taste is money. free. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. So yeah, that's how the, all of that happened. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, so long and John Allen. You say it out loud, I'm like oh my god, where are the years gone? Because, because I wanted to, because when I first saw it, I I thought you had from the get go, you had printed ease and like you was just doing the actual physical thing and selling them from mm-hmm. the very beginning. Nope, nope, so, nope, nope, nope. It so, was like it was about three years mm-hmm. of web comic, and then before you got yeah, into the printing and then one. and then I got to that point where I was like. It's time to remaster. So it was two years. Like I think the the face Facebook is good at that crap. It'll be like, hey, you know, two years ago you posted ah. this. So I was like, oh my god, it's been two years since I went into remastering. Yeah, and it's taken me two years to get all the way back around. Right. To here's the new stuff. And here's something y'all have never seen now. before. Yes. Okay. It's about to be issue number seven. About to start on issue number seven. That's what's up. Well. I can't wait. I really enjoy all the <laughs> the different um, issues all the way till six, and uh, yeah, like I said, it's a big reveal at the end of six. I can't wait to see. Oh, wait, that's five this year. I think you only have five. Number six is what I done remastering. Number seven, I'm about to start brand new. So okay. Number six. So is at the out. end of five that I'm at right now. Yes. Okay, got it. So yeah, like there's a big reveal at the end of five. I was very surprised. I wanted Were to you? Know more. Yeah, I didn't think that was coming. I just blew homeboys like, yeah. By the way, I'm such and such, and I was like, what? You think he's about to say like she? Even she thought he was about to say something else. To yeah, her. yeah. She was like, well, I ain't gonna so stop doing I, this, and he's like, that ain't what this is about. Sit so, down. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So like I said, I um, there's a there's a few things you got me hooked. I want to read the rest. Good, <laughs> yeah, I great. Read the rest. I'm glad. So, I'm glad. Yeah, you hear so, that yeah. out there, people? It's great. <laughs> It's great. I did a good job. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very good. And um yeah, I'm I'm glad cuz I was sitting there and then I was like, "Oh, you know, some some uh uh some blurs are next to me." I was so glad 
that I, that I had some some black nerds yes. as my neighbors. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. We 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 need to salute each other. Yeah, and, uh, that's so yeah exactly. That, stuff, like, that's so I really a, loved it. That's another thing, like the mm-hmm. the representation of black people in this mm-hmm. comic book, how varied it is. Because mm-hmm. you don't like, I don't know if it's just me not looking hard enough, but you mm-hmm. don't see it like enough. Like there'll be a black character here, there, over yeah. there. Like but you gotta go searching. Like, it, it's funny. It's not just that. It's that, um, and and um, like a lot of the the different companies or the different people that are into like movies, making shows or making comics. Their solution to everything is add one black character, yeah, I know add that. one woman. So it's like you can have do whatever you want as long as you got one black character. You got your diversity problem solved. As long as you got one woman, you got your like feminine problem solved, yeah. and then you're they, good. It's like and the it's freaking like, highlighter. No, you're not. It's like the freaking highlighter. There can only be one. Nick. They- like, uh, what is that? Walking Dead is famous for that crap. I'm just right. like, look at all these black people they have on this show now. They're all about to die. Like, I, you just know it's about to come because there can only be one. Yeah. And lo and behold, Michonne is the only one Michonne, left. Michonne is the only one left. They killed off every black they man did. except for Morgan. And he, he hit the road. Yeah. They they killed Tyrone. They, they, it was Tyrese or Tyrese. Tyrese. They killed Tyrese. Kill Tyrese. Bob. Ah, uh, Bob. Oh, they killed. Mm. They killed Sasha. And I'm just that like, broke my heart, good yo. Lord, like Why? they even killed that black guy that was a secondary character to the governor, Schumpert or whatever oh, yeah, his they name did. was. They yeah, murked they his ass off they screen. He didn't even come back. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So I'm just like, yeah, let's. And let's the one, the cycle. one Asian guy that they had, Glenn, killed Glenn. I know. Are there no Asians that survived the apocalypse? Like, why? Why they killed Glenn, man? Well, Glenn was a- the man. Apparently, there are no Asian women that survived. Whatsoever. No, apparently not. There are no Asian women that survived. <laughs> no Indian women that survived. Oh man, but no, nothing but but white men. But you know what? The apocalypse. You know, like, what? you know what? You know what? It's it's cool because it's causing other people to write to stories to do their to own include, thing, yeah. right? To include like, themselves was, in it, you know. That's what, what I said. I was like, so, I'm tired of waiting for you for somebody else to, to represent me. Exactly. Like, so, let me do it. So, because it, of, of course, you get like the the light skin, the tragic mulatto is what they call it. Ah! And it's, it's always my like first time hearing this. The what? The tragic mulatto. The, the tale of the tragic mulatto is okay. that okay? Me. It, it Teach go, me. It Learn goes, me. It goes back to like slavery times and stuff like okay. that. Is what of course got? is the bastard child of the slave master, of course, and the black mom, mm-hmm. and of course because this child is half white, mm-hmm. they don't fit in anywhere. Mm. The slave master does not want to claim this mm. half black child. The black people are like, oh, you, you're half white. You're on his side. Mm. So the mulatto would just be like on their own mm. all the time. Mm. It's like, oh, like the black people are like, oh, you especially, you get to work in the house. Right. And the, the, the light skin, the half black kid is just kind of like, it's not my choice, dude. Right. Like, I didn't ask for any of this. Right, right, right. Did you, did you, um, the show got canceled now, but did you watch Underground while it was on WGN? Oh, no. It was, it was amazing. And it was just like that. It was, yeah. uh, uh, I felt it was such a interesting take on this story of, um, these, um, um, slaves that choose to escape. Yeah. And, and one of them is just like you said, she's, um, the child of, you know, the, the, the slave master. The slave master the slave. And, and people don't trust and, her because she's half white. Right. And just and like, she grew up all her life in that house. So it's like y'all know to, I'm still a slave, right? So, so like, to, <laughs> and, 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 and one of the things that's crazy is that as as the guys that at the the slaves that want to escape, they've worked outside. They are kind of like more in tune with what it's like to be outside of the out plantation. The world, yeah. She has been in that house for so long. She probably never left the plantation. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's even more dangerous for her because she has no idea what what's going to gonna be out outside. there. Yeah. She's, she's never had to deal with the harshness of the everything. Well, you know? no, yeah. So, the, the, so tra- the, the tragic mulatto trope carries mm-hmm. over into a lot of mainstream media. You'll have this light-skinned black woman who's mm-hmm. either too angry for her own good or mm. too much of a, a kiss ass for her own good like mm. she just rolls with the punches or whatever the white person is saying i'm just like what is this crap mm. or you know she's the, the she's the reverse she's loud and obnoxious and a snob mm. and a brat because she's had like a charmed life and people don't give her any slack because they believe that she's had a charmed life mm. and of course that just makes her angrier because people are telling her how she is mm. so it's just kind of like like where does it end here so i was like you know what 
let's put them all in there. Light, dark, high yellow, light skin, light. I was, I was actually describing the other day. What did I? I was writing something, mm-hmm. and I was telling Lisa. I was like, I hope people know what red bone means because I was describing the character, and she's <laughs> red bone. She's red bone. I was that like. Is- I, I was that, like, well, I haven't had anybody ask me, well, what the hell is red bone? Like, what does that mean? I'm like, it means that you have a red, uh, like, you're not, you're kind of darker, but yeah, you're reddish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's a, you're, that's You a, got a reddish, like, like me, I know that I'm high yellow. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, even yeah. light skinned. Yeah, 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 I am high yellow because I have a yellow <laughs> But those, my those terms, <laughs> those terms are terms that, like, black folks know and you, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, well, so yeah, we lot. know the difference. So, so, so it's like, if you, if you don't necessarily listen to rap music and you don't necessarily hang around black folks, you may not be familiar with the terminologies that we use to talk about different colors. Exactly. Things, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm like, there's a difference difference between light skin and high yellow and red bone brown and then there's dark like there's yeah there's, there's, there's a difference it runs the gamut yes it, it, does. it definitely does all right so let the people know when the next issue is going to drop where they can why where they can go in and purchase it okay. and and where they can purchase the current issues okay current okay. issues are on sale in the illegal tender square store okay and you can access the illegal tender square store through the illegal tender site mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's basically just illegal tender comic Dot com. Sounds good. That's where you can find everything. Okay. So that's where the store is. Issues number one through five are out now. You can buy it digital or buy it print. Right. Uh, issue number six is just got done remastering. I got to put it into a book, so it should be out. I'm trying to get it out by mm-hmm. May because mm-hmm. that's when Momocon is. Momocon. And we have right. a table at Momocon. Right, right. Tell people. What, so, yes. Do they know? Do you know what your table number is? Or Ooh, I do believe that it is AA143. Okay. It so you should, will that, be like that's ad- what they told me, but last time I knew it, and they were like, "Oh, it changed." So keep an eye out. Where le- like the table is just called a legal tender. Mm. That's the name that it goes by. So number six will be on sale there, and hopefully I'll have it on the store before then. But most of it, like, and then I'm um, also doing a special trade paperback for Momocon mm-hmm. with all six issues in it. Nice. So it's gonna be pretty thick, manga sized book for yeah. your enjoyment. That's what's up. So, yeah, I, I do, like, trade paperbacks for Momocon. I didn't have them for the expo, but I will have them for Momocon. Speaking of which, I got to go home and order those and put it yeah. all together. Yeah. So, issue number six is going to be out in digital first, and mm-hmm. then it'll be out in print around May. Okay. Right on time for Momocon. Yeah, and then, yeah, right on time for Momocon, which is always, uh, what, Labor Day weekend? Or I think so. is it Memorial Day or Labor Day this well, time? Wait, wait, wait. Memorial Labor Day? Isn't that towards the end of the year? Which one's it? The something's in September, and that's around Dragon Con. That's Labor Day, right? That's Labor Day. September right. is Labor Day. Labor Day. May is Memorial Day. Okay, there we go. May Memorial. There, you see, just made it easy. Yeah. Okay. So it's there always it's always Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> Momocon is always Memorial Day weekend. It okay. lasts for four days from mm-hmm. like Thursday to Sunday. So yes, so I will you'll be, be at there. Momocon. Yes, let people come through. All four buy days. The comic, uh, go online by will you sign it when people buy. It? Yes, okay. I will sign. I will sign. You will get free stuff like buttons or a keychain or or a button instead <laughs> of <a> button. <laughs> I meant to say bookmark. You get free swag. You can get free, free swag. Free stuff with the purchase of the trade paperback, like there we always. Go. There we go. And then All you right. get to see me. Like I'll be there. Yeah, and added <laughs> bonus. Added bonus. You'll be there. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for listening to another awesome episode of Attack of the Blurt. Um, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.